I don't have Ahmad top 10 after beating Scrub. Well, see, I didn't have Scrub in my top 10 before that match. So beating Scrub, like I didn't have Ahmad or, or Scrub in my top 10 before they played. So why would I put one of them in my top 10 after they play? Like, you got to beat guys in the top 10 to be top 10. Or you got to be competitive against people in the top 10 to be top 10. Or you've got to have deep runs in tournaments. Stuff that Samway, Revzy, and Dead Monster were able to do. Like, Samway, Revzy, Dead Monster, for me, are the best, like, consistent players who didn't go really deep in tournaments. Like, Astral Jack, uh, Kyle Ajarius, Fahad Ferry, they've all been top 4 or better in Salt Mine 2 or Gold Mine. Um, then you got Dead Monster, Revzy, Samway, they're all, like, pretty consistent top 8s kind of guys in both. Revzy didn't get it because he was in the group of death. He would have got top 8 in any other group, probably. And then Trex has a trilogy win over Zamway, so that's like why I've got that in my in my group. Global 1v1 rankings? I've had a few people ask me, am I going to do North American 1v1 rankings? Am I going to do Global? And the answer is no to both, because North America is way too up in the air right now with First Killer being inactive, um, AJ losing 1v1s to Alarm Clocks, and... Yeah, it's just like... The NA 1v1 scene is just so sporadic. I mean, NA 1v1 is a lot harder to rank historically as well. Because so many players just, like, disappear. Without passing on the torch. I've said this many times, I'll say it again. So... EU... Let's think about who the best players in EU have been since the very start of time. And let's also tag on to them whether or not they passed on the torch. So we'll start off with Marky Duda, the first like established 1v1 best player EU. Did he pass on the torch? Yes, he passed it on to Scrubkilla. Scrubkilla then kind of for a while shared the torch with Cuxer. They played a lot. The best two players were Scrub and Cux. They played a lot. And then the next guy to kind of take the torch from them was Fairy Peak. Did Scrub and Fairy play a lot? Yes, they played a lot of 1v1. After Fairy, you got Flakes. Did they play a lot? Yes, they did. After that, you got Khaled. Did he play a lot against the, the other very best players? Yeah, in fact, he played Fairy, Scrub, and Flakes a bunch. Um, after that, you got Jorius. He's played against Khaled a bunch. Like, everyone in Europe, every time there's been a passing of the torch, the players have played against each other a lot, so it's very easy to see where the torch is going and what's happening. Devo as well. Yeah, for a while, it was kind of like Devo beats Fairy, who beats Scrub, who beats Devo. You know, Devo's also kind of there. He, sh I guess he shared the torch with Fairy and Scrub for a while. You've also got to mention Floris. He was very active. All the players in Europe who have ever been the best or close to the best played each other a ton. They played everyone a ton. Now let's switch to North America and let's talk about whether the players who are considered best passed the torch to the next guy or the next group. So first best player in North America in ones was Kronovi. Um, and then after him, I think it was probably Lachinio. Never saw them play. I never saw Cronovi and Lachinio play. Maybe they did. I never saw it. After Lachinio, it was probably Squishy and Dapper. I saw Squishy, Dapper, Lachinio play a bunch. So that's like one era in the Rocket League history for NA where it was very easy to see who the best players were because Lachinio, Dapper, and Squishy played each other a lot. Now after them... It was Lethimer, and I don't think Leth really played those guys too much because it wasn't really Leth's fault. Leth could have easily been the undisputed best in 1v1 for North America, but I don't think he actually ever got the chance to, you know, earn that by beating the guys who are considered, you know, also the best because they all just kind of stopped playing. Like Dapper, Squishy, and Latch all just stopped playing when they were kind of considered the best or close to the best. They didn't pass the torch on. I mean, that's just up to them, but it's, you know, it is what happens. And then Leth, uh, you know, he kind of, you know, he, he actually played, uh, he, he was active. He did pass the torch on to First Killer by, like, beating him, and then he lost to Chronic, who lost to First. But um, it was still nowhere near as much. The volume of matches wasn't there in the same kind of way that it was for EU. And it, again, it was not really any fault of Leth. I think he was just, like, kind of the only guy who was really good and active at that time. Well, for a while. He was the only guy who was really good and active. Everybody else kind of just stopped playing completely. And then, yeah, first killer. He was the undisputed best. He just stopped without, like, actually giving anyone a chance to beat him. AJ stepped up. Maybe he was the best. Loses 1v1 to sleep. You know, it's very hard to know who the best in NA is because so many of the guys who have been the best have literally just stopped playing. 
without actually letting anyone beat them, you know? They just retire. So it doesn't make for a very good story and it makes it very hard to do rankings. It makes it very hard to do um, greatest of all time in North America lists because they literally never played each other a lot of the time. But yeah, EU has a way more consistent and a way more like storied history for 1v1. I think that's why EU 1v1 is more popular. It's just because... Players like Marky, Scrub, um, Fairy, you know, they kept on playing. Even though they know they might lose, they were like, I don't care. I'll play, you know. It's uh, not really ego for them. They just wanted to play the best players. But when 1v1 is more, you know, when 1v1 skill is more related to ego rather than just the desire to play against the best players, you get what, hap you get what happened in North America for 1v1 in Rocket League and that is players when they're afraid that they might lose they just don't play because for them it's more about the ego than it is the desire to play the best players see I've got a lot of respect for players I want to like remove Kronovi from that equation by the way and Lethemir as well because I think those guys are both players who established themselves as the best in the region and then they still kept on playing even though they thought there was risk of them losing which is I have a lot of respect for that. It shows that they, you know, they just they just have a desire to play the best players. And they don't care what people think about them. They don't care about people seeing them lose. They just want to play. CJ, CJ, where are you in the list? Um, see the list? It's kind of like the Earth. Like, if you keep going far enough one way in the north or south uh, directions, you end up going in the opposite direction. So actually, if you kept going further up the table beyond number one you would actually go around to the back of this list and that's where all of the OCE players are including CJ CJ they're just on the back of the list this is like the northern hemisphere part of the list I'll be interested I don't know what uh, <laughs> my subs. I don't know what Yummy Cheese Man's 1v1 rankings for OCE are but I think he could do a pretty good one because he's been doing a few OCE 1v1s. When we play ranked again? Yeah, CJ, we definitely have to play ranked again. I've got so many points that I'm just... They're ready to be lost on the US West server. So many points ready to go into the bin. Um, so yeah, if you're US West, just hit us up on the queue later. We've got some points for you, me and CJ and Yummy Cheese Man. Um, do you think we'll ever see a proper 1v1 LAN? I've said many times in the past, I'll say it again. One of my all-time goals uh, in Rocket League content creation is to make that a thing. I will, I'll make sure of it. I promise you guys, I'll do everything I can to make a 1v1 LAN a reality because you guys deserve it. To be honest, just everybody in the Rock League community deserves to see how awesome that would be because can you imagine how sick a 1v1 LAN would be? Like just, oh, so many crazy series in the past. Can you imagine? I mean, even recently, can you imagine Khaled versus Fairy Peak on a LAN? Oh my days. Khaled versus Jory is on a LAN. Jory is versus Appjack on a LAN. Are you, guys, are, you, are you guys joking? Oh my goodness. The hype would probably kill people. There would probably be deaths from overhype. People would get so hyped that they would not be able to continue living. But there's no better way to go. So I don't think they'd even feel bad about it. I'd probably be one of them. Rip. I probably shouldn't joke about that. Moving on. A worthy death. I've been playing a bit too much Valheim. I've been playing a bit too much Valheim. I'm looking for glory, glory, glorious ways to die now. Um, right, what else we got here that I didn't put on yet? Yeah, let's watch a lot of goals. Goals are fun. There's probably going to be a lot of goals in this game because Trex is playing. Um... Yeah, we were talking about, about matches earlier. I've been thinking about that the entire time here. Just thinking, okay, what would good matches be? Um, and I reckon, you know, I would, I would love to see Fairy Peak play against Jack again. Don't know about you guys. I'd love to see Fairy Peak play Dead Monster, but I'd love to see Fairy Peak play against Jack. I think that would be a wicked match.
Oh, you know what else it'd be? I just saw another really cool match for Jack, actually. Dead Monster versus apparently Jack. That's a cool match. Didn't Dead Monster... Has Jack ever avenged his loss to Dead Monster? I don't think he has. Former teammates. Dead Monster beat him in Salt Mine 2 qualifiers. Oh my goodness, I just realized. I don't think that that loss was ever avenged. You, you've been saying that? Wow, that'd be actually a sick match. Dead Monster versus Jack. Why did I not think of this one? You want to see Cucks back in 1v1s? I think a lot of people want to see Cucks back in 1v1s, but I don't know if we're going to see it um, anytime soon. I, I personally have no idea what Cox's current activity is in 1v1. No clue. I managed to find like a couple of his replays. I managed to find like a couple of his matches to cast from ballchasing.com. Maybe I'll see if I can find any more replays from him. That would be kind of interesting. Type 1 in chat if you want me to go hunt for Cox replays and cast them. I'm not going to do it now, but I can maybe do it soon. Yeah, yeah, you just got picked up by uh, a Rock League team. True, true, true. You did. Yeah, that's true. That's hype. I, I love Cux. Cux is... Cux is and always will be one of my favorite people in the Rock League community. He's just such a cool guy. So he's so chill. We've got so many... Ah, oh, there's just so many Cuck stories from back in the day. Love Cucks. Always want the best for him. Yeah, Cucks, Cucks comes are so funny, like... Every time I hear Cucks comms, his mic is so bad, but it's kind of a funny bad. Like, you know when some people have a terrible microphone, and you're just like, oh, please, can you fix that? Like, your mic is awful, please fix that. I never want to talk to you again until you fix your mic. But Cucks' mic is awful, but it's kind of a good bad. Like, it's the kind of bad that I'm like, oh my goodness, your mic's terrible, please keep talking. This is too funny. Like, I don't know how people can come with it. Funniest comms in EU. I think probably a team that I would love to hear try hard comming and just laughing around at how funny they all are would be. <laughs> I mean, I know he's not in EU anymore, but we gotta chuck Turbo in there. Turbo's comms are just extremely funny. Can you imagine Turbo, Cux, and KDOP trying to communicate? That would be legendary. Cox, Turbo, and KDOP all trying to speak English. I, I'm sure they would invent a new language, like, while attempting to communicate what they're doing in the game. It'd be amazing. Like, I, I actually, I think I'm, I was <laughs> maybe with KDOP and Cox for their first ever conversation. It was season three, I believe, of RLCS. We were in LA for the World Championship. We sat down for dinner on the first night, and I, I believe I was with KDOP and Cox. I think it was in LA. And that was back when KDOP wasn't a multi-time world champion, most winningest Rock League player of all time, with all the prize money. He was still kind of on the come up, he was playing with Mocket then, so this is his first like really, really good team. Uh, with Fairy and Mystic. And he was like, whoa, Cucks are... <laughs> he wanted a picture with Cucks, uh, but yeah, these days everybody just wants a picture with KDOP. He's like the most famous Rock League player. KDOP is gonna take us all to the moon with his Twitch stream. He is so famous. It is unbelievable. And he deserves it. KDOP's a super hard working guy. He's hilarious. Um, and yeah, I've, I've worked with, I've worked with KDOP on a lot of events. He's been nothing but a pleasure to work with. I, I love KDOP. Awesome to see him. Uh, awesome to see him get the kind of success he is currently getting. I've ever talked to Khaled, what does he sound like? Um, I've never talked to Khaled, no, I've heard Khaled talk on 
Ahmad stream. Sometimes Ahmad streams with comms. Uh, and sometimes Khaled's in there. So yeah, if you want to if you want to hear Khaled, head over to Ahmad stream. Twitch.tv forward slash Ahmad. I might talk to Khaled about Twitch channel. I don't think Khaled's really interested in streaming, but um, I'd love to see him stream. Khaled would like go straight to 1K views, easy. Zero followers, 1K views. People want to see him play. He's got the Coxer 97 effect. <laughs> 